President Biden uh, is blaming Vladimir Putin for the death of Alexei Navalny. He called it yet, he called it, quote, yet more proof of Putin's brutality. Uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine said Navalny was, quote, obviously killed by Putin. The head of the EU called Navalny's death a grim reminder of what Putin and his regime are all about. What is your reaction to the death of Alexei Navalny? Well, I mean, listen, the bottom line is simply this, that the murderous dictator that is uh, President Putin always looks for ways to take out the competition and send a clear message just a few days or a few weeks before the Russian election where he will sweep away with another six years because there's really no election in Russia. That's part of the challenge that we face across the globe. We need strong leadership coming from America that actually pushes back against Russia and other dictators. Unfortunately, Joe Biden is not up for that uh, charge, and Donald Trump is. Well, Donald Trump hasn't said a word uh, yet about the death of Navalny or about Putin's culpability. Alexei Navalny was poisoned and sentenced to 19 years in prison while Trump was president. Um, do you want Trump to say something, and why do you think he hasn't yet? Well, Jake, I think a better question really is, let's look at the middle, let's look at the middle of the challenges that we face today across the globe. The middle of the challenge, uh, you see front and center, is the failure of Joe Biden. And when President Trump was our president, there was no incursion in Ukraine like there was under President Obama. When Trump left office, there was an actual all-out war in Ukraine. And so when you ask the question about keeping Putin in check, you look at the actions and the administration of Donald Trump, and you come to one clear conclusion that without question, Ukraine was safer, the world was safer, and America was certainly safer. Well, Navalny wasn't safer. He was poisoned, uh, likely by Putin or the Kremlin, while Trump was president. And Navalny's death, we should note, comes on the heels of comments Trump laid, made last week in your home state of South Carolina. He relayed an anecdote where Trump supposedly told a NATO ally that if that country didn't pay up, if that country didn't spend more on defense, he would tell Russia to, quote, do whatever the hell they want to them. Here's what you had to say about the importance of the NATO, uh, the NATO pact just three months ago. Take a listen. This is you. Keeping our NATO partners safe from the Russian military is absolutely essential, as you understand Article 5 would require to support and to defend NATO, our troops on the ground. The fastest way for us to eliminate that possibility is for us to destroy to the extent possible, the Russian military. By doing so, we actually achieve the objective of keeping our military Thank home. You. How do you square that with what Donald Trump said I was about NATO? Right then too. Okay. Listen, I was 100% right then, and I'll tell you this, without any question, from the beginning of the Ukraine war, what we've seen is actually Joe Biden dragging his feet. This is after we saw the botched withdrawal in Afghanistan. We've seen war in Ukraine. We have conflict in the Middle East. We have instability in the Indo-Pacific. What we need is strong American leadership. And when we have that, what ultimately happens is, in fact, world peace. The fastest, most effective way for us to get there is to look at the four years when Donald Trump was our president and ask the question, how was Eastern Europe? Well, Putin stayed away from Ukraine. In the Middle East, Hamas did not invade Israel. In the Indo-Pacific, China, because of the 301 tariffs, because of the headwinds put on their economy, they were not talking about Taiwan. But more importantly, Jake, the number one national security issue facing America today is our insecure, unsafe, and wide open southern border. Americans have spoken, whether I'm in church, whether I'm at the gym, or when you look at the polls, one thing is completely clear. Our southern border is the greatest national security risk we have as a nation. And unfortunately, Joe Biden has failed miserably on keeping Americans safe here at home. Mm -hmm. We can see that through the 70,000 Americans who've lost their lives to fentanyl, including my good friend's son, Alan Shaw II. I, I hear what you're saying about the southern border. I want to get to that in a second, because I know you just came back from there. But I don't understand how you can criticize 
yes. President Biden for dragging his feet when it comes to helping Ukraine, when Donald Trump is out there saying that we shouldn't, the United States shouldn't be giving any money to Ukraine, and he's and he he set out alarm bells throughout NATO countries when he talked about Russia doing whatever the hell it wants to do to, to countries that don't pay enough. Let's talk about what Russia is doing right now, because the key city of Adivka, Adivka fell to Russian forces yesterday in a major setback for Ukraine. President Zelensky blamed the loss on the artificial deficit of arms and ammunition uh, because of Western inaction. He pleaded for Congress to act. You, you said, after Hamas attacked Israel, you said President Biden had blood on his hands because he hadn't confronted Iran more aggressively yes. and Iran supports Hamas. If the U.S. fails to support Ukraine right now in the fight against Russia, will Congress have blood on its hands? Well, we've already supported Ukraine for over $100 billion. And when I said that Joe Biden dragged his feet getting into this conflict at the beginning, I meant that. Look at the fact that we followed Germany. We followed Germany to help uh, uh, NATO ally, to help Ukraine, not a NATO ally, but to help Ukraine. That is a really important first step that set us back by months. What we've been doing since then is playing catch up. That's one of the reasons why Congress has appropriated over $100 billion. Even Tr President Donald Trump has said a loan to Ukraine would actually provide more resources. The bottom line is this. Joe Biden's failure on the global stage is undeniable and can be measured in the loss of lives. It can be measured in the instability in the Indo-Pacific. It can be measured in the October 7th attack. It can be measured in Iran's actual aggression and their acceleration towards a nuclear weapon. It can be measured in the JCPOA and the failure of that deal when he was vice president. And and Republicans who Joe Biden border deal that the that the Border Patrol Union wanted passed. You voted against the deal and you voted against a standalone Ukraine-Israel yes. aid bill, in part because it didn't provide provisions to secure the border. So at the end of the day, are you fine with no additional aid for Ukraine, no additional aid for Israel, and no compromised border security measure that even the Border Patrol Union wants? You're, you're okay with the status quo right now? Well, Jake, thank you for that great question. It makes me laugh out loud, actually. Here's the truth. I supported the $14 billion in a standalone package for Israel. Let's be very clear. Joe Biden and the Democrats said they would, he would first veto the bill, and the Democrats would oppose the bill. Chuck Schumer would oppose a standalone aid package for our ally in the Middle East. Why? Because they wanted to leverage the deaths of uh, Israelis to fund Ukraine. My first objective is always to keep America safe. In the border bill, we did not see a border wall, a border wall having just returned from Eagle Pass, Texas, listening to the Border Patrol agents themselves. Here's what they're telling us, Jake. A border wall would make the actual officers safer themselves. It would see a precipitous drop in the number of illegal immigrants crossing our border. In that border deal was no funding for a wall. There was no new policy or reinstating the policy of remaining in Mexico. Without those two pieces, allowing two million, Ameri two million illegal immigrants into America, yeah. that's not a border deal. It had six hundred and fifty million dollars for. Uh, it had six hundred fifty million dollars for additional funding for a wall. $650 million when the president of the United States is selling off the construction material for the wall? Come on, Jake. Let's, let's get serious about uh, protecting America's, America so that we can actually help defend the rest of the world when we find it appropriate. We cannot, we cannot forget America's number one national security issue is, in fact, securing our southern border. Well, so is the Border if Patrol we were to wrong? finish that wall... The Border Patrol agents, the, I'm telling you what the Border Patrol agents told me when I was literally in Eagle Pass, Texas on Friday. Yes, they were right to ask for a bigger wall. Yes, they were right to want us to take some of the resources, as I put in legislation, 
from the IRS and take $40 billion and give it to the Border Patrol agents so that they can double the number of agents, so that they have more resources for overtime. I absolutely agree with doing the things that are in my own legislation. The question we should ask ourselves is, are we safer without a physical impediment? And the Border Patrol agents that I met with said absolutely unequivocally not. Are we safer without having the remain in Mexico policy? Mm. They said in two weeks with the remain in Mexico policy, Jake, in just two weeks, we would see 90 percent potential drop in the Eagle Pass, Texas area from illegal border crossings. And yeah. you've got to think about Shelby Park and the thousands of folks that invaded small neighborhoods in America. 28,000 people living in Eagle Pass, Texas, with one hospital being confronted with thousands upon thousands right. of illegal immigrants overrunning their community. That's one of the reasons why Texas and Governor Abbott had to act.